This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Hey, aloha, and welcome to Think Tech Hawaii Studios. You're watching the Cyber Underground at 1 o'clock on Friday afternoon. We're going to be talking about open source intelligence and uh, kind of kind of continuing on with uh, this discussion we've had the last few weeks. I'm here with Jeff Milford today uh, from ISC Squared. Jeff, good to have you. Thank you. And uh, we don't have the Professor Hal and we don't have the Professor Dave. So um, we don't have to do a bunch of analysis today or a bunch of teaching. We can talk a little story, sorry, maybe little some report. stories from the field. Yep. Um, and uh, we'll see what's been going on. So open source intelligence gathering. First part of that kill chain. Now, I know, I know you're telling me that IC Square doesn't really, doesn't necessarily look at the kill chain for the, the way they stack their, their credentialing and things like that. So for for the the CISSP, that wasn't part of the, the sure. body of knowledge or the the CCSP, but it's something everybody has to be familiar with. Yeah, in practice, course. right? Yeah, you know, the CISSP is the, as broad as it can be. So you have to understand it, and you have to be able to to detect when people are doing things like that. Mm -hmm. um, that includes the social social engineering part, which I particularly enjoy practicing. Ah, I see. Um, but uh, from the good side of things. The white hat side. The white hat side. The research side, side exactly. as we call it. Researchers. Yeah. Researchers get a lot of yeah, heat like for... I'm, I'm supposed to be allowed to go into this building, but what happens if I try to go in without a badge on? Mm -hmm. Is somebody going to stop me or wander around and somebody going to ask questions? Yeah. I used to do that at one of my older jobs. I won't mention who it was, but um, you learn a few buzzwords. You get somebody's name inside the building. Mm -hmm. You just say, I'm here to fix so-and-so's computer. Uh, they're having trouble with the XYZ app, and boom, you're in. Mm -hmm. And you know, people want to be helpful, right? Sure. So. And I think that speaks to a thing that we, we teach a lot in from my world, a little bit more about access control and having that badge and challenging mm -hmm. people. Exactly. Right? If someone yeah. comes to you and they've got some story and not a credential, Escort them to the desk and let's call the, the place they say mm -hmm. they're going. Let's do a little homework. Don't just accept them at face value because they look friendly or they act friendly or they seem to know where they're going. They should have the proper credentials. And this person they were supposed to see, why aren't they with them? Mm -hmm. That's always a great question, right? Yeah. And so yeah. it's a big piece of it. I um, definitely, um, when I would bring on new clients or, or when they wanted to meet with us, I would I tend to show up early for their, at their facility mm -hmm. and I would do the same. I just hit, walk around, see yep. what's the posture? Does anyone stop me from going anywhere? And somebody yeah. might say, hey, can I help you? I'm just like, yeah, I'm just going to the restroom back here. They're like, oh, it's that way. And just <laughs> they just let me go like any which way, you yeah. know, so. Well, what's in here? <laughs> sure, interesting stuff, interesting stuff. Yeah, the social engineering piece is, um, um, I think, what's relied upon a lot. You know, we talk about the idea of uh, we can implement a lot of the technical controls. We, mm -hmm. we have a great mapping for that with right. the 853, all the stuff from NIST and the cybersecurity framework, where, wherever you may take your guidance, be it ISOC or ISC squared. Um, and once you get a place technically hardened, mm -hmm. you still got this problem called people. The, that human equation. Gordo calls it the wetware. The wetware, I, I like yeah. that one. So, yeah. you know, we, yeah. have, we have these human problems and the humans make themselves vulnerable really to the, um, uh, to the exploitation of this open source intelligence mm -hmm. by the, the, the information that they share. Now, some of it, maybe they didn't mean to share. It's been harvested right. from some place. Um, but what, um, when, when you guys have, are, are in practice, what are, what are some of the things that you're, um, you're looking for in an organization that they may have some of the sloppier practices that you see with their staff? Um, with the project I'm doing right now, I've been calling vendors, and I asked them, uh, can you send me a list of uh, equipment and the IP addresses on our network? And I get these full dumps of They have that information. Everything. And they yeah. send it over on encrypted a email, right? Yeah. <laughs> and granted, I have an email address for the company I'm working sure. with, but one of the guys in IT overheard me and he goes, wow, you're really good at this, aren't you? <laughs> you're but, convincing. Uh, yeah, again, it's, it's people wanting to help people, mm -hmm. and I'm representing a, a client you know, I'm a customer, and mm -hmm. I've got a good story on why I need this information. And they're like, oh, yeah, we, we pull all that. Sure, yeah, let me get that to you. Mm. Is tomorrow okay? Well, yeah, tomorrow's fine. Wow. Yeah. Isn't that something how easily, how easily people would share with that? They didn't, even, they didn't verify you with a third party. Nope. Didn't really have to have a password. Don't really, they may know you're working over there and trying mm -hmm. to help, but are you yep. actually of the authority level that should get that particular exactly. information? Yep. They didn't really 
you know, yeah. validate that. So and maybe your name's on a list. They say if Jeff calls, give him anything. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Who knows? But yeah. you know, maybe that's not the best practice either, right? Uh, probably not. Because maybe your contract ended yesterday, and you're calling again and today calling to get some today. other information. Yeah. That you now that I did sell. my recon as a contractor. Mm -hmm. Not, oh, not that, wait now. <laughs> not that I would ever do that, of course. Yeah, you got to stay on one side of the fence that's if right, you want a, a long-lived right. career on, on either in the dark or in the light. You know, one way or the other. Well, crossing, it, crossing the fence will, will, will um, shorten your career. It, it will, and, that, and that's the thing about contracting too: is you have a reputation, sure. and if it ever gets into a gray area, you're done for. Mm -hmm. You can never reestablish that again. I learned that when I was on the mainland working for some company. Hmm. You have to always be better. More visible, more transparent, all of that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Yes, but I think people are asking better questions today. Hopefully, I'm sure you're seeing that from the interviews when people are trying to mm -hmm. acquire your services. They should be asking better questions. Um, I saw the Microsoft report came out today, the security report. Um, massive 44% of um, the uh, vulnerabilities, the, the sort of the brute brute force attacks that are happening against people's passwords are mm -hmm. happening because people are still using that domain password and they're using it over on their Facebook or they're using it on their LinkedIn or someplace else that it's been harvested from. Yep. So is that a, is that, how are, how do you see companies combating that? How do they police their, their employees other than training, of course? Well, but. In, inside you, you can force the password resets, you know, okay. give them a short age. Uh, you can't use the same password for 30 times. I mean, you can get really crazy with some of the settings, mm -hmm. um, but people, I mean, they're going to write it down somewhere. Mm. Uh, we, if it's difficult. That, that was another game we used to play when, when we were contracting because we had to go log into these people's machines when they weren't there. Okay. And nine times out of ten, we could find their password. Oh. It was under the keyboard. It was taped to the monitor. It was behind the picture of the kids. They, or they have a picture, picture of the other kids' names. Or exactly. Their, or their and you just turn it off. Oh, okay, here yeah. we go. Wow. Um, <laughs> we were talking about this before. It, people, most people don't think like bad guys, because we're all honest people. Yeah, we're trusting. And it's the same thing with sharing the information. Most people, it doesn't occur to them that, like you guys were talking about, sharing a picture with information in the background. Mm. You don't think about how that information can be used against you. Mm -hmm. And you can't live your life as a paranoid, because that's like a sign of mental illness, but I've lately been using the word cautious. Yeah. You need to be cautious. You need to think. You need to think about it. Um, slow down a little bit like you were talking about somebody calls you up and says hey i'm so and so remember yeah from from school and <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah we had a couple beers together and i started thinking that yeah one of the things one of the reasons why that works is because you give them you're you don't have time you don't have time to process the information mm. what people need to do is just stop and say hey can i call you back give give me a number where i can call you back at mm. and Hang up and then think about it. Maybe open your yearbook and say, Yeah, do I really remember this guy? <laughs> right, right. Because again, wow. we want to be helpful, and mm -hmm. if they have a good story, you know, we're going to buy it. But if, if we take a minute and say, uh, You know, I, I really don't remember this guy, so be cautious. Mm -hmm. You know, take, take that extra minute. And if you tell the guy, You know, give me a number where I can call you back, if they're a bad guy, I don't think you're going to get that number anyway. Right. Yeah, and they're going to. Like they're going to move on thief, to the next. Sure. They're going to move on to the easiest thing. Mm -hmm. You know, burglars are going to look for houses that are unattended with doors unlocked. Mm -hmm. If you have lights going on randomly and and you know your house is well set up, you don't have the bushes this high. Yeah, all those kind of physical sure. security things. Mm -hmm. They're going to move on to the easier target. So don't make yourself an easy target. Mm -hmm. Don't use the same password across multiple. Mm -hmm accounts and, and such. Yeah, they, um, that, that report talked about it was one of the, the biggest uh, things that they found is still ha as the biggest vulnerability mm -hmm. I mean, for attacks against Azure and things yeah. like that. So yeah. it's like, wow, you know, people, we've been preaching that for years now, you know, in, in, in my world. And, and mm -hmm. I guess not everyone's as cautious as, uh, you know, we, those of us in the industry yeah. are, 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 you know, I guess um, paying better attention to those rules than we did it, in the past. It, it naturally occurs to us. I had a woman ask me to reset her password to Mango. What? And I just said no. That's a no. <laughs> no, cannot. It's, yeah. Uh, we're here in Hawaii. That would be a really easy, easily guessable password for somebody, even if it was lowercase. Yeah, that's not, that's surely in the uppercase. list that they run in their brute yeah. force list. I mean, all the fruit in yeah, Hawaii. Yeah, you I can mean, do better. All, than all that. the fruit I think is on the list anyway. Yep. Like all yep. that kind of stuff. Yeah, you need multiple words. I was um, 
uh, I, I don't know if you've seen uh, Diceware. I was, I was talking about yeah. Diceware a little bit yeah. last week. So mm -hmm. nice list of words that aren't meant. And if you use seven of those, you get really quite a bit of, um, of uh, you know, 270 years at, you know, a, mil right. a billion cycles of, yeah. of processing power. So stuff like that can work out for people who aren't creative enough to, mm -hmm. you know, change their password yeah. to something difficult. And we don't have quantum computing yet. So Not yet. We're still, yeah. we're still safe. I was also thinking about the password and I had mentioned before that I like to use some foreign words or some foreign languages. Yeah, I think that's a really make, good idea. Make the hacker load multiple dictionaries. Make mm -hmm. it harder for them so they go on to the easier target. And then I started thinking, well, what else could I do? You know, people will substitute letters for symbols sometimes, you know, a, a exclamation mark for a one. Mm -hmm. That starts to become easily guessable. Yeah, they run that. What if, what if you just choose a random word and insert that in the middle of your word? Mm -hmm. Boom. Yeah, now makes it very it's difficult. Much more complex, yeah. and those are simple things people can do. But again, having multiple passwords for all the accounts, I, I go home and I look at, I, I keep a list. You have a list. I have a list. <laughs> it's locked in the safe. It's very secure. <laughs> it is. It is secure. Um, but periodically, I have to pull it out and use it because I have probably close to two hundred accounts. Yeah. Wow. And there's no possible way. And I know there are applications on the market vaults that will store them using a master password, mm -hmm. passphrase, everything sure. else. That's where we use Passportal. Um, I'm still kind of old school. Um, what happens if, it, if the application gets corrupted? Okay. Um, okay, stored in the cloud, the vendor's responsible for it. A couple months ago, uh, one of the vendors for business, a uh, lot of big name companies, got hacked. Sure. And. I mean, it's... Nobody's safe? Nobody's safe. We're going to take a break. We're going to come back in just a minute and talk a little more about Jeff's list. <laughs> Hello, I'm Helen Dora Hyden, the host of Voice of the Veteran, seen here live every Thursday afternoon at 1 p.m. on Think Tech Hawaii. As a fellow veteran and veterans advocate with over 23 years experience serving veterans, active duty, and family members, I hope to educate everyone on benefits and accessibility services by inviting professionals in the field to appear on the show. In addition, I hope to plan on inviting guest veterans to talk about their concerns and possibly offer solutions. As we navigate and work together through issues, we can all benefit. Please join me every Thursday at 1 p.m. for the Voice of the Veteran. Aloha! Planning all week for the day of the big game. Watching at home just doesn't feel the same. Put on the list, it's who's gonna drive. It's nice to know you're gonna get home alive. Plan for fun and responsibility. Choose a DT. Captain of our team, it's the DT. For every game day, assign a designated driver. Yeah, we were just we were just loving that commercial you watched about the designated drivers. Uh, anyway, so we're ta we're talking about password lists. We're talking about storing information, uh, critical information. Um, you know, do you can you use a password uh, storage tool? Right, when you've got hundreds of accounts to manage the passwords for, you can't remember all those passwords, and then you know, can you trust? that you've got one password to get into all those passwords, right? right? That vendor, and where's that information stored? In the U.S., is it in the cloud, mm -hmm. is it in Europe, where is it, right? right? So some things you should ask yourself, probably for the storage of your information. And when we look at open source information that people, we talked a little bit about images mm -hmm. and some of the stuff that could be in the background. Yeah. We talked about the um, um, uh, geo-tagging, you know, that pe mm -hmm. people may not know that th that photo actually has information about where it was taken. So if you post it right now and you're there, you're obviously not at your home mm -hmm. or at your work or wherever. So, you know, there may be some uh, vulnerabilities there that you're exposing by, by putting that information out. Um, let's take a, what about some other things? How about like uh, forums, blogs, IRCs? You know, I was thinking about if you're in, in an environment like that where you're actively chit-chatting with someone, mm -hmm. they know that. So they know that you're sort of locked down yeah. to your keyboard at that time, right. perhaps. Now maybe you're in your office, or maybe you're at home, or maybe you're on a mobile. Can can we tell what type of device someone's using when they're doing stuff like that? 
do you have a way to assess that? I know there. I know there's some. I know that some of the video display stuff mm -hmm. that we have, it can tell if it's showing video on a, on a on a laptop or on a tablet or on a phone, for yeah. example. It, it changes the frame rate based on the way it's being served right. up. And I just didn't know if uh, if there's I other there, some open source tools for, you know, knowing what yeah. somebody's using. You know what I mean on the other end of the line. You'd have to pretty much drill down and know where they where they are, mm. maybe down to their network location to start being able to read that type so, of so thing. So starting to look back at where they're coming yeah. from, you can maybe figure out where yeah. they are. Mm, I see, it makes sense. But uh, yeah, and, and as you were you were saying, the uh, you know the whole chat thing, you don't know who you're talking to. That's well, that, that's the other point. You know, they they say they they want to have a date with you, you know, mm -hmm. and promise you the world, and yeah. uh, you know, actually they want to rob you blind, maybe. Yeah. Meet me on the other side of town here while <laughs> yeah. I go rob your house. Come to dinner at six. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, it's one of the things that um, we try to teach young people. Mm -hmm. You know, they they aren't as experienced. They they don't have the the life stories yet, so mm -hmm. they're very trusting in a lot of cases, mm -hmm. and that leads to sometimes some very bad things. Um, you know, I, I forget the the statistics, um, but people under four who were meeting people in person that they had met online. It was oh, I didn't know who that did. Two out of five. Oh wow, something like that. It was uh, it was really scary. That's kind of scary. It is. And that's somebody who's being socially engineered, right? Exactly. Through, yep. Through compliments or whatever, and they they just oh wow, and so they feed their ego, yep. and the kids are, are don't understand that yep. vulnerability that could be there. Yeah. And the adults person. are like that too. I mean, you know, I'm yeah. sure. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Okay, so let's go to um, so forums, a little bit of chats. What about um, so we talked, we talked, we kind of beat up the social networks. So we can maybe maybe leave that for a little bit. What about um, like uh, people search engines? So what familiarity do you have? Because we talked about like <laughs> so LinkedIn and Google, and you know yeah. obviously you can go, but where where else can you find stuff about people that they may not know? Uh, I just in prep for today's episode, I downloaded a list. Okay. Out of Google, of course. Okay. And it must have had sixty or eighty websites that okay. I had no clue about because I don't typically use them. Sure. One of the things that didn't have though was LinkedIn, which I found odd. But there were probably fifteen business sites on there. There are sites for uh, um, checking to see if people have arrest records, mm -hmm. things like that. Um, the picture sharing websites. And it was very easy to get that list. Okay. Um, Interesting. And now here's here you go. Here's a whole bunch of ways to start developing some information on somebody. Sure. And again, we don't always recognize how that information can be used. And m in most cases, people don't stop and think about what they're sharing. Mm -hmm. um, this week, I was working trying to contact a vendor. I'm doing risk assessment on their their application okay and I need to get some technical information so I go to their website they have a sales number that nobody answers they okay. it just goes to voicemail they must they're either too busy or they're they're not busy at all I don't yeah, know what that means something, something when your sales people don't answer the phone you right. have a business problem yeah <laughs> and uh, there's no email address but they do have an online web form Okay, so, so you fill out the form. I tried three Was it HTTPS by any chance, or was it HTTP? No. Oh, really? Okay. And three different browsers didn't work. Wow. I type in my message, hit send, and it just... A lot of people, a lot of the browsers now reject, you know, if it's not HTTPS, right? They're not going to... So that's that started. That wasn't working for me. And the weird thing was, I logged into their site, I created a support incident, got a ticket number back to my email address. It worked. Okay, so that worked. So then I go to log in with the account I created to create the support request, and it tells me access denied. <laughs> uh, how can you deny me access? <laughs> and then I get an email back from them telling me that, you know, your, your uh, incident has been noted and will be in touch. And it got to be like Groundhog Day. It, it was just a constant loop. And I finally reached a point where I just said, okay, enough is enough. There's got to be a way to contact these people. Okay. So I fired up the Google and typed in their company name. And after, I think, about three links, I got a beautiful list of all the people that work for them. There you go. And what they do wow. with their pictures. Mm -hmm. So here's a guy, John Smith. He's head of their technical support. Nice. So I know their domain name, yep. at company.com. So I just started trying different 
formats for an email address, you know, first mm -hmm. letter, last name, put a period between first and last name. Sure. It took four, five attempts, mm -hmm. but I got through. Pretty trivial. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. And, you know, the guy's like, how did you get my email address? <laughs> more he didn't want to work at all? Like, yeah. More importantly, wow. why aren't you responding to my request? Sure. So the, the cool thing was that when it was giving me access denied, it's because their system was blocking me because their system didn't know my domain. Okay. But, they, but you're, you were coming from their were, customer site, though. Right. But the customer internal to the company mm -hmm. was actually using a slightly different oh, domain gotcha. name. Okay, so that's what they, were, that, they would have allowed what, that. That would have allowed that. And of course, there was a ton of this information floating around at your clients. They, no one knew what to do. So he actually told me the two people that I should be talking to within the company, which was very helpful. Okay. So I contacted one of them and I said, hey, this is what I'm doing. This is what I'm, I'm trying to accomplish. I'm working for this person inside the company, blah, blah, blah. Um, do you want to authorize me to speak with these people or would you like to pass on my application questionnaire to get it filled out? And I was so happy that she chose a second option. Yes. No, no need to authorize me. I'm, I have no need, no business at all communicating with these people except for this one time. So she passed on the questionnaire and hopefully I'll see it back before too long. I don't know. Their track record's not that good. Although once you got to them, to the right actually person. it was okay. Yeah. Yeah, but and, and the guy explained to me why I kept getting access denied. Mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, I understand that. I'm in security. I understand that. Mm -hmm. And you're kind of doing the right thing here. But the rest of all this stuff, oh, my what, God. What, HTTP web forms? Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So they're, they're, they're probably working on building up their back end or something. It sounds kind of interesting. Yeah, so basically I social engineered my way in. to the head of their tech I decided, support. Did he, like, did he like that you did that? Uh, he did he ask you how long it took? <laughs> no, he couldn't really say too much because technically I am a customer, so you don't want to mm, alienate yeah, him. Yeah, that's true. Um, but he, if he's smart, he's probably going back to his team and saying, you know, we've got a little, uh, a little problem mm -hmm. here. We're, Maybe we shouldn't have put those pictures. We're of too us easy up. to find. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah, and and it looked like in a fair couple year old um, page I'd gotten to, mm -hmm. and you know another thing you can do on websites is you go to sitemap. Mm -hmm. And, when you and you can see all the old, old pages that they don't display anymore, and that's, they didn't, didn't they have didn't it there. Mm. They, they did. I mean, their their site was reasonably secure, and the product that they manufacture is something that you would want them to be secure about. Mm -hmm. um, but it just it just struck me as as funny, and and you don't. Mm. I'll, I, I'll find a way to get in touch with you. So there's a, and, and there, this this brings up a, actually a pretty good point. Um, you can go to places like Facebook and Twitter, and I don't know about Twitter. Twitter may live forever. Uh, but there, you can have a lot of your information taken down. You can send requests into Google to take old information down. So if you have stuff out there, that doesn't mean if someone else linked to it or whatever, but at least in your own profile and searches for you, you can, you can get some of that stuff mm -hmm. out of there, yeah. especially if it's no longer. But say it's a place you used to work that has your photo up there. Maybe it's got your title, and there's no telling what could be there, but you don't, there's no reason for that information to be there any longer. Mm -hmm. And possibly it's all already been archived by the dark web. I don't exactly, know. Yeah. But, you know, there's no sense to leave it searchable from the, the, um, the open source intelligence mm -hmm. world, right? You found all this stuff in open source. Yep. So before we get, we had Tom Fielding in here, of course, we talked mm -hmm. about the dark web and all the information that's down there that those right. guys monitor for. They can find out if somebody's building a profile of you in mm -hmm. the dark web and things like that. So uh, this is just open source intelligence that you hunted up. So it's, it's, it's interesting that, you know, a company like that's gone to an extent to hide themselves. They're not really a marketing posture, right? right? Norm yeah. Normally they're very open and there's all mm -hmm. kinds of ways to get a hold of a company. Yeah. So that's of interest to me, you know, it's um, yeah. well, pretty good. Um, but they're, they're, I was stunned by the number. I, you know, everybody, everybody uses Bing, Yahoo, Google, mm -hmm. you know, the, the major search engines. Sure. But there was a list of 20 search engines here mm -hmm. and it wasn't like ask Jeeves or, or you know some of the, the yeah, when the onion right it was yeah, yeah. it um, it just went on and on and on and if people are determined to learn something about you they will mm -hmm. and again we go back to the the privacy mm -hmm. stop for a minute before you upload something I, I understand I've I have friends who use Facebook um, to stay in touch with family mm -hmm. different parts of the country it's really cool but I'm in a position right now where I'm trying to find work. 
I don't want to go to my cousin's website and like something political on there. Yeah. Because that could come back to oh, bite me. Definitely. Yeah, employers and definitely do that. They do those they same do. searches. They do those same At least searches. cursory, and some, some go deeper depending on the type yeah. of job you're looking for, you and know, especially some, in the security world. So. Some people would say that's paranoid. I no, prefer to not. look at it as being cautious yeah. now. I'd say it's, it's, today it's common sense. I mean, you, you made a great point about people oversharing, people trusting, mm -hmm. and uh, that's been something that has, you know, I think already been shown to be a bad practice and, and you know, maybe some people don't feel like they, you know, when you have anything valuable to lose, but when a guy goes and takes your world away from you and becomes you and gets credit in your name or whatever he does, mm -hmm. um, all that identity record information becomes, wow, I didn't think someone could do that to me. I didn't think anyone cared about yeah. me. No one knew about me. I'm no one. Mm -hmm. Actually, the no ones are, there's a purpose for using the no ones, actually. So. Yeah. I, I read about a woman who was um, spearfished because the guy found out where she lived. She had posted pictures of herself in front of her house with the street address mm -hmm. visible. She had posted pictures of herself in her kitchen. And this sounds probably kind of silly to a lot of people, but in the picture you could see various kitchen appliances. And the security researcher said, what if I impersonated somebody from Cuisinart and told them that there was a product recall? Mm -hmm. Click on this link. Mm -hmm. Boom. Boom. You're going to get Done. her. You're going to get her. Yep. <laughs> Yep. So there you go. Um, your open source intelligence world, uh, there are a ton of people out there gathering that information, using it for things that aren't always uh, in your best interest. So make sure if you're putting your information out there, you're putting it out there for a reason and you know what it is and why it's out there. Um, and, and be very cautious with putting this information about yourself out. Take a minute before you click send. Take a minute before you click send and think about it. All right, that's all we got for this week. Uh, thank you so much for joining Think Tech Hawaii and listening to us on the Cyber Underground. Come back next week, and I think we'll probably still be doing some open source intelligence and maybe starting to look at some of these tools uh, that are used by uh, these researchers.